Good evening. Thanks so much for staying up late with us. I'm Tim Pham. A three and a half year sex trafficking investigation into a network of massage parlors and spas in Seattle leads to the arrest of six people. Police say they've busted a prostitution ring out of 11 different massage parlors in Seattle. The raids happened in Seattle's Chinatown International District. It happened in late February and during them, investigators uncovered cash, firearms and rescued 26 women from the operation. This led to charges against five different spa owners and a warrant for a sixth person. The CID public safety coordinator says neighbors called the massage parlors a security problem in a recent poll of more than 500 residents. More people said that they were concerned about the number of massage parlors in the neighborhood than they were concerned about being sexually assaulted in the neighborhood. The women were between 20 and 60 years old. Those arrested allegedly conspired to lure women to the U.S. with the promise of a legitimate job. The police department spent more than three years investigating and monitoring the activity at the spas before serving warrants. Police are working with the FBI to possibly connect this case to similar cases across the country. You may remember one year ago, Homeland Security investigators looked into illegal activity at the Crystal Sea Massage in North Spokane and Space Oil Massage in the Spokane Valley. The Spokane County Sheriff's Office and the FBI received several complaints regarding prostitution, forced labor and sex trafficking at both businesses. Undercover agents went in and confirmed workers did attempt to perform sexual activity. As we prepare to spring forward tomorrow, doctors out of the University of Washington are sounding the alarm on the health impacts of daylight saving time, a measure that would make daylight saving time the norm passed in the Washington State House today, and now it's on the way to the Senate. We wanted to explore how things would be different if we were to get rid of daylight saving time. Our sister station in Seattle explains what this could look like. What would happen if we never had to fall back? Well, for one, the morning hours in the winter would be much more dark. Sunrise wouldn't happen until about 9 a.m. in December. However, we'd have much more daylight after school and after work. The sunset would be closer to about 5.30, giving us at least some daylight at the end of the day. But what about the energy savings? One of the reasons daylight saving was created was to help with energy usage in the first place. If it didn't get light until 9 a.m., lighting and heating for your home could increase during the cold, dark months. Currently, Arizona and Hawaii don't observe daylight saving time, and these states are considering permanent changes to it as well. Places like Washington, California, Florida, Illinois, Oklahoma, Tennessee, South Carolina, Mississippi, South Dakota, Virginia, Alabama, Vermont, Kansas, Nebraska, Wyoming, Massachusetts, Maine, New Hampshire, and Michigan. So what do you think? Should we change our own daylight saving rule? Across the board, it kind of seems split. When you look at that map, it seems like a lot of states are considering possibly getting rid of it. So, Michelle, what do you think? How do you feel about daylight saving time? I, you know, I think we can adapt to whatever happens if they, they quit doing it. We'll just we'll get used to it yeah. like anything else. Everyone might be a little sleepy on Monday morning, <laughs> yeah. but when you fall back, it's always nice to get that extra yeah, hour. It's kind of kind of a love hate relationship. You know, when you gain the hour or lose the hour, kind of like a uh, weather today. We kind of love it. when We see the sunshine during the day, but with the clear skies at night, we end up with some cold. pretty chilly <laughs> temperatures. That's right. And that's what we're dealing with right now. We're kind of getting the the cold side of the story right now. We enjoyed the sunshine today and even though temperatures were well below normal, if you were outside, there was light winds, there was sunshine and it felt warmer. It's kind of the opposite of the wind chill. It feels warmer than it actually is because that sun shining down on your skin. But the clear skies out there right now, we are going to see some chilly temperatures. Satellite and radar picture not showing any precipitation across the inland northwest. There are still some clouds out around the OMAC area, Okanagan Valley, but elsewhere from Deer Park into the Idaho Panhandle, down towards uh, Moscow and Pullman, and even down into Lewiston, looking at mostly clear skies and temperatures are reflecting that. A little bit warmer out uh, at OMAC and Grand Coulee, temperatures in the 20s, but in the teens right now in Deer Park, Coeur d'Alene, Sandpoint, Pullman is down to 
12 degrees right now. We still have quite a lot of nighttime hours left. We're going to see that downward trend in temperatures in the Spokane area. Looks like we'll be bottoming out somewhere in the middle to upper teens with clear skies, but then we should rebound and see some sunshine tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow looking like a pretty decent day tomorrow with sunshine during the afternoon highs in the mid 30s. Monday we'll probably start to see a few more clouds later in the day, and I hate to say this, but we do have <gasps> snow in the forecast for Monday night into Tuesday, and it looks like we could be picking up another fresh couple of inches. But as you notice, daytime temperatures will be climbing up into the upper 30s. Thanks so much, Michelle. New tonight, the Whitman County Sheriff's Office responded to a plane crash just east of Pullman early this afternoon. A single engine 1964 plane crashed in a field and landed upside down. The plane was equipped with skids meant for landing in snowy fields and frozen terrain. Those skids dug into a field while the plane attempted to land, causing the plane to flip. The pilot only suffered minor injuries that did not require medical attention. Today, arrows were flying in Deer Park. Hundreds of students competed in the Eastern Washington Archery Championship. They've spent months preparing for this competition, and Krem 2 Shayna Waltower caught up with the students about the, the life skills they learn in this competitive sport. Well, the competition is on here at Deer Park High School. Months of practice coming together for students all around the area. I try and take my time and like try and take deep breaths so then I could like get settled and then like release. Load, aim, release. It's a delicate routine for all of the archery competitors. I was nervous because that was the time to show what I had and what I practice for. And for practice, these students have dedicated months of spending time after school to perfect their skill. This championship is a part of the NASP archery program. Here, students are competing in two categories, 3D animals and bullseye. And as they step across the line to begin shooting, they're thinking about how much time I put into it how much time I put into trying to get where my aims are and like where I have to aim. And all the work they've put into preparing. Every day I go to archery club after school and I practice for uh, 3D and for uh, bullseye. But after those arrows have landed, the pressure is relieved. I was very excited how I did. I did good. I got a lot of tens. The most exciting was like going to see what my what my uh, scores were. So like see if I did good or not good. Now after this regional championship round, qualifying competitors will get to go to Salt Lake City for the national championships. In Deer Park, Shayna Waltower, Crime 2 News. We're learning new details tonight about the interstate shutdown near Hutter rest area in Post Falls. Idaho State Police say a semi truck carrying military missiles crashed and caused major delays on the interstate. All lanes were closed for about two hours. Idaho State Police say the semi truck carried 16 missiles weighing about 2000 pounds each. The driver was traveling eastbound when he accidentally drove into the hazmat containment area of the port of entry instead of the interstate ramp. The truck ended up in a snowbank and the driver received a citation for inattentive driving. Fortunately, no one was injured.